Well, hello everybody. I was invited here to speak to everybody about scams, especially for the elderly, um, because there are scams that attack or are definitely aimed right at the elderly, scams and fraud. So I'm hoping to cover the top 10, as well as go over some of the slang for them and the definitions, okay? Okay, this is me. We'll get this out of the way real quick. My name is Sergeant Scott Dobbinmeyer. I, have an, I had an associate's degree from Lakeland Community College in the year 2000. I graduated high school in 1985, so you can see Lakeland has a 15-year program. <laughs> I would love to say that you, my name is Dr. Scott, but it's not. Uh, I graduated the police academy in March of 2002. First department I tested for was the first department that hired me, and that was the city of Menorna Lake. For that, I have a loyalty here. While I was working here in the city of Menard Lake, I achieved a bachelor in science degree in uh, criminal justice from Kaplan. It was at an online university. The joke about that was because it was online, people always said I got a BS in CJ. Um, I was employed city of Menard Lake part-time starting in the year 2002 to December of 2003 when I was uh, promoted to full-time officer, and that's to the present. And I was promoted to sergeant in July of 2012, and I'm in that capacity to the present. Other part-time departments that I work for, I work for Kirtland for a short stint while working for Menard Lake, and I also work for Eastlake for a short stint while working in Menard Lake. Okay, how do you spot a potential victim? What do they look like? What do they wear? What color hair? How tall are they? Do they look like me? <laughs> by the way, the wallet size, the 8 by 10s and the posters will be for sale outside. <laughs> Fact of the matter is, to the criminal enterprise, we all look like victims. Every one of us. And especially now with the way um, the scams and the frauds are going, the internet, the telephone, it doesn't matter what we look like. We're only a voice, we're only keystrokes. So, there is a formula to crime. Now everybody knows about, you know, one plus two equals three. We know if you go into geometry, you know, side A, side B, or plus B equals side C. But there is a crime formula. Means or method plus motive plus opportunity equals crime. The fact of the matter is, without any one of those, the crime can't be committed. Without any one of those means or the method, motive or opportunity, take one of those out of the equation, crime cannot be committed. You can't have the crime. Let's give you an example. Let's go over a fraud. This one's for the elderly. You got the means, the method, could be phone, could be mail, could be by computer. You got the motive. What's the motive? They want your money. They want your information. They want any chance they can get to get the money from you. What's the opportunity? The victim gives, sends their money. They send gift cards information. They send bank accounts, social security information. What part of the crime can the victim prevent? Opportunity. They have the motive. They have the means. You know, they have everything but the opportunity. Victims give the opportunity. Most of the time, unsuspecting. Can we prevent all crime? No, absolutely not. But crime can be discouraged by knowing what to look for. There's some common slang, fishing, smishing, catfishing. I can write a rap song with just those words. Uh, you got skimming, farming, and you got spoofing. Now I'm going to go over these definitions. A lot of them you're going to recognize because I'm not, this is the last time I'm going to use the slang because when I go through the top 10 scams or fraud that are used now, I'm not going to use these, but you'll notice by definition that these are the ones that are being used against elderly and others. So phishing, smishing, and spoofing basically mean the same thing. They trick the users through deception, giving up their personal information. That's about as simple as it gets. Doesn't matter how they trick you. They could trick you by saying they're a prince. They can trick you by saying 
they're in love with you because they've been emailing you back and forth for how many you know months or whatever doesn't matter they're going to they, they'll trick you by deception and they're going to somehow give up your personal information it could be you know the social security scam it could be the IRS scam that we're going to go through but that's what phishing smishing and spoofing is another form of spoofing that we see in the police uh, department is when people are getting prank phone calls you can actually go on a website on your phone and you can uh, add a spoofing app and you can pick whatever phone number you want to and you can make phone calls or text messages from that phone number and it comes back to nobody I have actually gotten phone calls from scammers and the phone number's mine yeah so be careful of that too if you are calling yourself don't answer the phone You know what? That is the only reason when um, in my house that I kept a house phone was for the answering machine, so I didn't have to pick up the phone. And it's something we're going to go over later. Your cell phones. If you know, I, Apple I know has it. I'm almost positive Android has it too. There's a setting where it actually detects potential spam. Set it to that. Or the other thing, if you don't recognize the phone number, let it go to voicemail. You can always listen to it later, but most of the time, unless your car warranty is out of date, they're not going to leave you a message. <laughs> skimming. It's also known as e-skimming. What they do is you go to these stores. Everybody sees these stores, and some of them are legit, some of them are not. You know, let's say you're looking for a new shirt. Let's say you're looking for a pair of pants, a pair of shoes, a new hat and you do a Google search. I'm looking for a hat, you want a specific hat. So you start typing in what specific hat you want. Well, it's gonna take you to websites that you don't normally go to. You know, if you go to Amazon and they don't have the hat, you go to um, Overstock or whatever, you know, the websites are that you go to, and they don't have the hat, well, you're gonna start typing it into your search engine. You start going into your search engines, they're gonna start bringing up websites that you normally don't go to. So. What you don't realize is when you're not comfortable with sites, don't go to them because they could be run by the hackers, by the, by the criminals that we're worried about, okay? And they could be fake. There could be absolutely nothing in their store. It could be somebody running it out of their basement. So when you finally find your item and you buy your item and you go to their checkout store, it's fake. What do you put into your checkout store? You put in your bank account information. You know, you put in your credit card information. By the time you pay for it, and it's only $39.99 with about $10 shipping or whatever it is, not only are you not getting your hat, but they got access to your bank account. And by the time they clean your bank account out, there is absolutely no way to trace it. So you gotta be careful of stuff like that. Catfishing, it's the romance scam. They make up fake profiles. They unsuspecting victims. They either befriend, make them fall in love. It happens, it happens all the time. We had a resident here in the city that lost $85,000. It was her life savings over something like this. Not only did she lose $85,000, her male roommate was still talking to the guy on the phone and he started sending him checks. Guess what? It's illegal, but how do you catch the guy who's in Nigeria? Yeah. How do you catch a guy who's in India? Not to mention, they think it's real. So are they gonna press charges? No. Their money goes, it's gone. There's no, way, there's no real way to go track it and get it back because they don't think it was wrong. They think it was absolutely legal, so they're not gonna go, they're not gonna wanna do anything. So now it's the family members that are trying to do, help them out or friends that are trying to help them out. Scary. Farming. This one, what they do is there is, I always picture it as a warehouse of servers. You guys know what servers are, right? They're just a bunch of computers, a bunch of computers and they're mainframes. They're not laptops or PCs, but they're mainframe computers and these computers are programmed to make phone calls, constant phone calls, okay? Um, and they're either um, emailing, 
phone calls, um, texting, whatever. And what they're doing, and they call them farms. So they call them farms of servers, so that's where the pH comes from. And all they're set up to do is make calls and try and get people's information. That's all they do, nonstop, rolling over, rolling over, rolling over. And where do you think they get your information from? Every time you guys plug your information into the computer, it's public information. Put your phone number into a website, they sell it. Your address into a website, they sell it. Phone number, sell it. Email, sell it. That's how these companies make money. Spoofing, pretend to be somebody else. We talked about this, you know, with the phones. You know, you could spoof a phone number. Same thing with people. Spoofing, they pretend to be somebody else. IRS, Amazon, or even a courthouse. You guys hear that one on the uh, news recently? Lady got a phone call right in the middle of her class. This is the courthouse. You were sent a summons for jury duty. Why didn't you show up? Oh, I don't know. I didn't get it. You didn't get it. It's the law that when you summons, you have to go to court. We got arrest warrants out for you now. So what you need to do is you need to go buy some gift cards. Green dots. Those are, those are the ones that they do now, green dots. You need to buy these gift cards. You need to immediately turn them over after you buy them. Read me the information off the back, all the numbers. And that'll take care of the fines. We'll tell you what the fines are. And once they do it, okay, arrest warrant's gone. There was no arrest warrant. How many people, I'm going to tell you right now as a police officer, the court is not going to call you on a phone when you have a warrant out for your arrest. <laughs> not early. Okay. That will do. That will do. That will do. I have actually called people on the phone saying you got a warrant. It's people that I know and deal with on a regular basis saying you got paper again. You know, so. But they won't. Amazon always calls me and says uh, $500 was charged. Mm -hmm. Do they have an Indian accent? <laughs> or, or, Ni or a Nigerian accent? Yeah, did, well, don't. This I know, I know. And I'm going to go over this later, but it's no, um, no reason for many not, need, me not to say it now. If you get a call from Amazon, you get a call from the IRS, you get a call from the courthouse, say, okay, thank you very much. Hang up the phone, look these numbers up and call them back yourself. Not with the numbers you get from the people on the phone. Call their numbers back as you find them in the phone book or as you find them on the internet. You call them on the phone, tell them what you were told, and let them tell you that it's fake or not. Never call the phone number that they give you on the telephone when they're talking to you. And you'll hear me say that again. All right, here's the different scams. Now, like I said, I went and looked on the internet. I wanted to find the top 10 scams that are going on right now, okay? So you got the different government scams, you know, the IRS, Social Security, the grandparent scam, there's a couple of those going on. My mom actually got one. Um, you get the medical or health insurance scam, and we're gonna go over all these, I'm gonna give examples. Computer or technical support scams, sweepstakes and lottery scams, robocalls, phone scams, romance scams, internet and email scams, elder financial abuse scams, charity scams. Like I said, we're going to go through all these, okay? Let's talk about the first one, the IRS scam. They're going to use either the phone or the computer. They're going to say, you owe money. And we know the IRS always calls us on the phone, right? Oh yeah, they'll call you on the phone. They call you on April 14th, right? And say, remember, turn your taxes in tomorrow. We don't want to cost you any more money than what you owe us, right? That's the first thing they do. They're always here to help. They want their money right now. Don't get off the phone. Take the phone with you when you go get these gift cards. You're laughing. That's what they do. They want you to either go to the Western Union, which I don't know, does any, you guys shop at Giant Eagle? Do they still have the Western Union thing at Giant Eagle? I know they were trying to get it out of there because there were so many people being scammed using the, uh, the Western Union. 
but the gift cards are the same thing. They will, these, these people are, they're good. And they're, and they're bossy and they're, they bully and they threaten. Um, they will tell you, go get it now. Don't tell anybody you're getting it. Keep me on the phone so I can hear you doing everything. Once you purchase $2,500 in the gift cards, go off to the side, don't let anybody hear you and then read me the numbers on the back. As soon as you do that, $2,500 gift cards, gone. They are done erased immediately. Again, they will never call you, okay? The IRS is not gonna call you to tell you you owe money. They will never email you and tell you you owe money. They will never require payment now. The first thing the IRS, they want their money. They will set up payment plans. They do it all the time. They will never ask you to pay off your bill in gift cards. They will never ask you any kind of over the phone payment. They will work something out with you. They want right out of your bank account. They will set it up where they go into your bank account and take it out. They will never come to arrest you. I've talked to IRS agents. I have a friend who was an IRS agent. That's not their job. If they want to get you, what they do is they go to the federal courts. They get you indicted. You get a court date. If you run, they send another agency after you. IRS are money collectors, not people collectors. Don't listen to their threats. They will send you a letter with instructions and it's gonna come official. This is the IRS, okay? If you don't trust the letter, don't look at the phone number on it telling you to call, look it up, www.irs.com. It's that simple or irs.gov or something like that. It's very simple. Call or look that number up or go to that website, look that number up, call them on the phone. Is this letter real? Yeah, it is. Let me direct you to the person to talk to. Or who else can you call? Family? You. Police? You guys go to church? Talk to your priest, your clergy, your reverend? Rabbi, ask somebody. Social security scam, same idea as the IRS scam, only they're gonna tell you, oh my goodness, your benefits are at risk. Just yours, not everybody's, just yours. They're gonna talk you into giving your personal information because they're gonna tell you your benefits are at risk but for some reason, they don't know your social security number, so I need you to verify it for me. I need to verify it's really you. It's not gonna happen. That's not the way they do things. They are that good though. They are good. They will manipulate you. They will manipulate you into believing that it is really a, a representative from the social security office. Hang up, look up the phone number, call them back, or talk to somebody about what you got. When they get your personal information, that's what they do, folks. They open up fake accounts. You know, if it ends up being somebody homegrown and not somebody out of the country, you know, they're gonna open up cable in your name. You know, they'll go by cell phones. This has happened. I get people all the time calling the police. They, I've been, uh, it, I don't know what the report, it's a theft or something, what do you mean? Well, I'm just told by Verizon, I owe them like $700. You know, somebody used my name and bought a, a cell phone. Or somebody used my name and went to Amazon and bought a new gaming console and blah, blah, blah. They, they charged over $2,000. It's because of stuff like this. They're that good. They get your information. It's all they need to go open up accounts. What are, when you open an up account, what do they ask for? Your name, your birth date, your address, social security number. The grandparent scam. This one has happened multiple times, and again, it happened to my mom. There's a couple different ones. If your elderly friend has dementia or family member has dementia, this one's gonna get them. There's a couple different ways they do it. The one they do is they will call on the phone and say, Grandma, do you know who this is? Oh, Billy. You've just given them the name. You've identified their grandchild. Yes, Grandma, this is Billy. I'm in trouble. 
oh, Billy, what can I do for you? Uh, they could be in jail. Um, their car broke down. Um, I'm in the hospital. I have no money for my medical bills. It could be anything. And because you've already identified them, or your, your friend or your, your loved one have already identified them, they've already got them sucked in. They're gonna give them whatever they want. What do you need? I just need your credit card number just so I can make these payments. Gone. I've been kidnapped. Now this one is, is really scary because they're screaming into the phone. You can't understand what they're saying. And I'll tell you what, you try and discern which grandkid or if it's your grandkid actually talking to you on the phone while they're screaming into the phone, help me, help me, I've been kidnapped, help me, help me. Whatever grandkid you think it is, it's gonna to come to your mind, that's who you're talking to. They are that good. Same idea, grandparent establishes identity. They'll tell you, don't call the police. You call the police, they're gonna kill me. Wire transfers the money, gift cards, it's untraceable. Money's gone. And guess what? Billy or Julie or whatever is at home on the couch eating Fritos, playing video games the whole time. So in this particular case, I know it would be hard to do. Hang up the phone. Call Billy. Call Julie. Call their mom. Call their dad. I just got this phone, num phone call. They're going to tell you it's fake. Because who do you think Julie and Billy are you know, probably going to call? They're going to call mom and dad. <laughs> They're going to call their guardian. Now, if, if grandma or grandpa is the guardian, well, that one's going to be a tough one. Okay, But for the most part, if Billy or Julie call you and they're screaming kidnapped, call their cell phone. Because I guarantee the number they're calling from isn't their cell phone. It's going to be tough, I know. But make sure it's actually them you're talking to. Medical or health insurance scam. This one I have never run into. I've heard of it, not just from reading the website, but I've heard of it. Um, they're going to pose as insurance reps. They're going to talk you out of all your medical information, your, you know, your social, your name, address, DOB, bank account, because you have to give them your bank account in case they do medical procedure on you. They're going to need payment if you don't have insurance. Then they're going to talk you into going to a bogus medical, mobile medical clinic. Uh, we're going to give you a physical. Now, all you got to do is show up to uh, the library parking lot um, at 10.30 a or p.m. Why? Because the library is closed. Um, and go in there and Dr. Fu Manchu is going to be in there and he's going to uh, give you a physical. And it, you know what? We're just going to bill your insurance company. There's not even going to be a copay. Guess what? They'll actually bill the insurance company. They'll get the money. You'll never know anything about that mobile clinic because they're gone and they got the money from the insurance company. This one we're seeing a lot more. In fact, the last one I saw, it was a wife of a f retired police officer. They had a uh, gaming console that they use for live streaming movies on their TV. So she had just turned it on and up on her screen comes a message from Amazon. You've been hacked. Call this phone number. She called it. This is Amazon support. How can I help you? Well, I just got a, or just got a uh, message saying that my computer has been hacked. Okay, um, let me look into you. What's your name? What, what's your address, phone number? What's your, what's your uh, console number? Give all that information. Now guess what? Now they have access to the console. They're in. Your computer's been hacked. In fact, you have like 26 hacked accounts within your console that has actually did um, um, illegal purchases on Amazon using your accounts. Oh my goodness, what do I need to do? Well, we're gonna be able to put that money back in your account. In fact, look, we've been, we've been searching and investigating this group, hacker group in fact, here's your hacker, and up on her screen comes a picture of a guy. He's from Russia, 
and he's been working in a ring for, for years, and we finally tracked him down. So we've got agents on it. Cool. Well, what do I need to do? Well, we're going to fix your console. What you need to do is you need to go up, you know, you're on, you know, you know such and such in Mentor in the Lake. Well, my information says you're right down the street from Giant Eagle. You need to go to Giant Eagle, keep me on the line, don't tell anybody. You're going to need $4,500 in gift cards. $500 a pop. Once you buy those gift cards, you're going to read me the numbers on the back. So, she does this. Okay, all right, now, now you need to go back home. Before she, before she does this, let me, let, me, let me go back a little bit. Before she does this, she's starting to think this might be a scam. So she's starting to question a little bit. He goes, hold on, I'm now in touch with your local police department. The officer is going to give you a call. Phone rings on the other line. She answers it. Hello, this is the police department. I just want you to know that we just got a phone call from the Amazon tech. This is legitimate. So if you pay these fees, they're going to be able to fix everything and you're going to get every bit of this money back. She was on her way back up the Giant Eagle the second time before she realized, you know what, I think I'm being scammed. Called her husband. Her husband says, you are definitely being scammed. And I mean, this is a police officer in the family. That's how good these people are. That's how elaborate their schemes are. They will go through, and, and you know what? If you get one person that outsmarts them and says, no, this is a scam and hangs up, you've got nine others that fall for it. Lottery scam. This is how it goes. Congratulations, you have just won a sweepstakes or a lottery. We're gonna send you a check for $10,000. All we ask is that you deposit this check right away as soon as you get that, as soon as you get it. And once you do, you just need to pay the fees. I need you to take out of, your, out of that $10,000, if you would just please send us $500 of that so you can pay the fees that it cost us to send you this money. Oh, no problem. Deposit the check. Well, guess what? A lot of people they send the check to have enough money in their accounts. Now, I bring $500 up, but this could be a $20,000, $30,000, $50,000 check. And the money or fees could equal $1,000, $2,000, $3,000. And they already have it in their account, so it's nothing for them to withdraw it and send it or remotely send it or, or you know. And guess what? By the time the bank realizes that it's a fake check, the money gets withdrawn and taken out, they're out their own money. They're good. And you got to think about this. How many times did Ed McMahon knock on people's front doors from the publisher's clearinghouse holding that big check and said, here you go. The only thing I need from you is $10,000. <laughs> Robocalls, they're automated. This one's scary. This one is scary. They're going to call you on the phone. It's a computer, and it's recorded. The computer's gonna, you're gonna say, hello. Computer's gonna say, hello. You're gonna say, hello. Computer's gonna say, can you hear me? Can you hear me? You're gonna say, yes. Guess what that did? It recorded your yes. yes. What means whatever they wanna do, they can call your bank institution. I want access to their account. Well, how do I know they gave you permission? Well, here, here's on the recording, and they'll put in front of it, ma'am, do I have your permission to access your account? Yes. It's on recording. It's on recording. They're good. It's a criminal enterprise. Think of criminal enterprises as business, as law enforcement or federal law enforcement figures a way to stop it their business is to figure out a better business. Stuff like this is scary, and, and it's simple. Think how simple that was to come up with. Okay, our favorite one, phone scam. Listen, warranties expire. 
And if you're somebody who doesn't know how long it's been since your warranty was up on your car, you could fall for this one. You just bought your car four years ago, you figured, you know, hey, my warranty is going to last forever, and you got somebody calling you on your phone and say, hey, your warranty expired. Oh, I better listen to what they have to say. They're good. They'll trick you. They'll trick you into giving them the make, model, year, engine size, package of the vehicle, and then about five or ten minutes later in a conversation, when maybe you start to question a little bit, say, well, ma'am, our records indicate you have a 2020 you know, um, Chevy Cruze with this package in it. How would I know that if I didn't know about your warranty? That's how good they are. And you know, a lot of their phone scams, I mean, you got some of the elderly, like I said, with dementia or problems remembering things, I mean, if they're five minutes into the conversation and somebody has a difficult time remembering what they told them, they're going to fall for it. Romance scams, fake social media profiles, we kind of hit on this one before. A majority are from overseas, a majority. I'm not going to say all of it, it's a majority. They just exploit lonely, lonely senior, seniors. You know, you're on a website, all of a sudden, you know, you could be on chat rooms or whatever. I mean, they still do that stuff. They still, they still have, um, if you go to websites, lonely seniors and little different chat sites will come up that you could join and you can, you know, get emails of people and stuff like that. Well, I mean, these, they'll, they make up fake profiles, fake photos. They, they go and find other people's photos from other people's vacations and they'll send this stuff to you. Oh, I just got back from the Caribbean, you know, this. I, I just got back from doing this. Or I live in, in the Caribbean and they'll be sending you all this stuff. Oh, I love you so much. I love you. I can't afford to come and be with you, honey. I love you so much. I want to be with you. Can you please send me? It's the only way we're going to get together. And they send it. That's how lonely they are. They'll send it. They, they don't want to believe that they're being lied to, that it's fake. And family members, friends will try to convince them that it's not. They don't want to believe it. Internet scams, you got pop-up windows that'll pop up. Your computer's got a virus in it. Click here and we'll fix it. Click on it, guess what? You just put the virus on your computer. Not only that, but you probably gave, you gave them access to everything on your computer. Photos, bank account numbers, your Facebook page, you gave them access to everything. You install the antivirus and you know, they'll say, click on here and oh yeah, we found 13 viruses on your computer and thank goodness you clicked when you did because if you didn't, all 13 were gonna go into play and we're gonna wipe your computer clean and you would have had to buy a new computer. Thank goodness that computers now cost $400. We're only gonna cost, charge you 250 to clean your computer. You know how easy it is. Some people, some people will will find difficult passwords and usernames. Some people use their birth dates. Some people use their kids' names, their kids' birth dates, the year they were born, and everything else. You got who here is on Facebook? Okay, who here when they're scrolling through Facebook and it comes up and says? Nobody here can name a fish that starts and ends with the letter A, go. And they'll name a fish. Okay, if that fish was your password, they now have that fish with your, with your uh, Facebook name on it. You know what I mean? That's what they're fishing for. PH, fishing. That's what they're fishing for. You're playing those games. Who was your first friend in high school? What's your favorite number? What do you think they're looking for? Those aren't just games made by you know, your friends or whatever, even though your friends are posting them. That's fishing. Think about that the next time you try and play one of those games. They're fishing. 
So to, to answer your question, believe it or not, there are people who will store their passwords on their computers. Once they have access, they go to a nice folder that says passwords. So it probably would behoove you to make a very difficult password with different letters and Absolutely. And everything because they're hard to There are many people, me included, who have so many different accounts and require so many different passwords that I make mine very easy. So I'm very susceptible. And I'll be the first to admit it. If you go, if you can, if you go to store on the computer, where do you write them down? Pencil and paper, keep them close to your computer. If you have a lot of passwords, if you have a lot of accounts on your phone, um, pencil and paper, keep it in your purse. Just somewhere. I mean, maybe not in your purse. You know, you could think, well, what if my purse gets stolen? I understand. Keep it at home then. You know what I mean? It's like there's, there's so many things that you can do and, and try and be safe about it. You know what I mean? There's so many things. You can... 9-11 hit. Who was afraid to go outside for a while? Okay. You don't want to be afraid to live. You don't want to not go on your computer today because you're afraid you're going to be hacked. You don't want to not answer your phone today because you're afraid that there's going to be some on the other line that's trying to get all your information, okay? But there's certain things I'm sure you can do that would help you not to be a victim, okay? One of them would be don't put your passwords and user words on your computer. Leave them off your phones. Find a different way to store them. And yes, make them difficult. Um, don't make them, don't make them words that or numbers that anybody could guess within 10 or 20 tries knowing you to find it. We talked about that. And guess what? The same entity will continue to send the virus update. Oh, we got an update for you. 200 more dollars. We got an update, 200 more dollars. And there's people that'll keep clicking. And they'll, they'll do direct deposits and direct withdrawals. So it's automatic. Every time you click the button, 200. Click the button, 200. Click the button, 200. And they don't know any different. All they know is their computer's being fixed. Email scam. I love this one. I love it in a sense that I've heard about this one the most. In fact, I have gotten this one the most. The prince of some country you've never heard of has been kidnapped. Uh, all you need to do is send money and the kidnappers are going to release him. Once he's released, the prince will pay you one million U.S. dollars. One million U.S. dollars. Now, according to Windowmeters Info, there are 7.9 billion people throughout the world. Be lucky. That rich, imprisoned prince chose you to help him out. Chose you. Out of all the people in the world, out of all the people in the world who have money, out of all the countries in the world who have mercenaries that could go in there with guns a-blazing, everybody chose you. 7.9 billion people. No, they just went through. Ha <laughs> ha! No, it's a scam that people fall for. They see $1 million and that's all they see. They don't care about the prince. They see $1 million. This one is sad because we see this a lot. In fact, I just had a case about this one in December that actually went up a few months. It's perpetrated by somebody the victim knows. They get control of their assets. It could, the money, bank accounts, um, CDs, investments, everything. It could be as a caregiver. It could be as their power of attorney. Seniors with dementia are at significant risk of this because they actually think that the family member or 
good family friend who's looking over all their money. They think they're actually doing good for them when they're probably being robbed blind. Now, I had this issue, like I said, in December. Now, depends on which side you believe. He had power of attorney over her, and it was his mom. And he had gotten this power of attorney back, I want to say, in 2006, when mom was, mom was spry, spry enough to sign the form. It was notarized. Everything was legit. Everything was legit. Um, and as she was starting to deteriorate, and he decided that he wanted his daughter to move in. So he moved his daughter in with her, and slowly but surely, um, he gave daughter access to bank accounts. Daughter decided she was going to make um, um, upgrades to grandma's house. So she started buying window treatments, beautiful. Um, you know, new mattress for grandma, new pots and pans, um, a new 70-some inch TV, a new sound bar, because that's what the 90-year-old grandmother really needed. Um, High-heeled um, sandals, makeup, lots of makeup. Um, you can see where this is going. Okay. Um, overspent for herself probably by about $20,000. Okay. So this gentleman's sister and niece came to me and told me what was going on, showed me the bank accounts. They're stealing from my mother. Okay, let me look into it called him on the phone because as we're working on a case, we have to talk to, obviously, the one who's being accused. Talk to him, he says, I'm power of attorney. I said, show me paperwork. Either show me paperwork or I'm bringing you up on grand theft charges. Comes in, notarized, power of attorney. Case over. Power of attorney says, I have control over her bank accounts all her assets, her home, car, everything. So now I gotta tell the sister and niece, sorry. However, something you should tell um, family or the person who is subject of the power of attorney even when it's notarized, signature, the whole nine yards, a power of attorney can be negated at any time by the person who is the subject of that power of attorney. Okay, so if you suspect anybody who's being fleeced or frauded out of their own money by a family member or close family friend who's got power of attorney over them, get their family involved, figure out a way to get that power of attorney taken away before they lose all their money, okay? Because with that power of attorney, there's no case. Charity scam. This one kind of sucks. They disguise themselves as actual charities. They'll capitalize off of natural disasters, pandemics. Obviously, we just went through a big one, so I'm probably actually still going through it. Tsunamis, earthquakes, religions, calling on the phone looking for donations. My favorite one is the highway patrol. My mom fell for that one for years. You know, they'll call, they'll ask for donations. The Highway Patrol one was a great one because if you donate $10, $20, we'll send you a sticker. And you put that sticker on your car and you're thinking, hey, you know, not only did I, I donate, but now they won't pull me over. Guess what? We found out the Highway Patrol does not call you on the phone and ask for money. Where could your money be going? Criminals? Warlords? Drug cartels? How about terrorists? Guys, ever think of that? The money that they steal from unsuspected victims could actually be feeding terrorists. They gotta make their money somehow. Perfect way to do it. So, do not be embarrassed. Falling for scams does not make a person weak. Say it with me. Falling for scams does not make a person weak. Now I'll say it again using the word me. Falling for scams does not make me weak. Oh, that was horrible. <laughs> Senator Bernie Sanders says I can't hear you. <laughs> Falling for a scam does not make me weak. Let me hear it. Falling for a scam does not make me weak. 
Hulk Hogan can't hear you. Let's go. Let me hear it. Louder. Very good. Do not be embarrassed. They are good. They are good at their craft. That's why they make so much money. Okay? They manipulate. They pressure. They bully. They threaten. They are good at finding weakness. Let me look this up. I found a stat today. Let me read this to you. According to um, the FBI's Internet Crime um, Department, per day, there is over 2,000 complaints per day on average of scams, of people who are reporting scams. The number reported since 2000 is when they started keeping the stats, 5,679,259. Since 2020, Victims' losses have totaled $4.2 million. There's been over 440,000 complaints received per year on average over the last five years. Okay, the age range, under 20 victims, to total count, 23,186. Uh, since 2020 have lost over 70 almost 71 million dollars age range 20 to 29 70,791 reported victims lost almost 200 million dollars uh, the age bracket of 30 to 39 almost 89,000 reported victims almost 493 million people the age bracket of 40 to 49 90, almost 92,000 reported, $718 million lost. The age range of 50 to 59, 85,967 reported, $848 million lost. Now, leading over 60 years old, 105,000 reported, almost $967 million lost. Who are they targeting? They're targeting the elderly. So, don't be embarrassed, because if you get embarrassed, then that could stop you from actually reporting the crime or telling somebody. Okay, don't be embarrassed by it. I just gave you the numbers. They're good. They're good. Please tell somebody if you are a victim. Let's stop the scam before it starts by following a few steps. Before you give your money away to a stranger, call the police, call a family member or friend, call a, a priest or clergy. And like I said, if they're calling representing a company or a charity, call the charity or that company on the phone. Make sure it's legitimate. In other words, get a second opinion first. If you don't recognize the number, we went over this. Don't answer it. If you don't recognize an email, don't open it. If you don't recognize the voice, hang up. That is phone number, address, and the websites for the Federal Bureau of Investigations. If you're the victim of a scam and you don't want to call the police and you want to remain anonymous, there's the FBI's phone number. Okay.